by saying it was wonderful to see Senator Fetterman here today. As a friend and a freshman colleague, it's great to have him back both in this committee room and here in the Capitol. Thank you for appearing before this committee today. We appreciate your time and your intentionality in answering our questions. I believe that this committee's role is that of oversight and it's essential for holding leaders in our executive departments accountable for the decisions they make and policies they promote that affect all Americans, whether it be in our housing programs or our macroeconomic policies. America has seen inflation increase by 15.4% since President Biden came into office. As a mom of two school-aged kids, I see this firsthand every time I go to the grocery store or to the gas pump. Groceries are up 20% and energy costs are up 36%. Families in Alabama, South Carolina, Ohio, and in every community across the country are feeling that pain. Rising prices have cost that typical households um, it's about 10,000 in two years. Families, parents, and retirees have had to bear the brunt of that persistent inflation over these last 23, 24 months. Dr. Bernstein, I wanted to talk to you following up on what Senator Kennedy was asking you. I know you've been asked once, but I want to make sure that we can clarify this. Do you still stand by your past comments indicating that inflation is transitory? It the problem with the word transitory is that it's become, uh, I think, an unhelpful uh, and much too ambiguous term to describe the trajectory of inflation. It is true that that word or any other word, temporary, any synonym, suggests a condition that where inflation accelerates and then inflation decelerates, it slows down. Now, inflation peaked at 9% in June and most recently was seen at 5%. That's its lowest annual growth rate since November of 2021. So in the, that sense, the view of acceleration then deceleration was correct. Transitory, however, was too temporarily, too temporarily ambiguous a term. Okay, so you do agree that that, was, that term should not have been used? I think that the term was far too ambiguous uh, to give people a clear sense of what we were yeah, thinking. Yeah, and about. so one of the things we need you to do as a leader and someone who advises is give the public very clear indications of what we can expect. Um, unfortunately, the word transitory for many means temporary. It means that it would be short-lived. That's certainly not what we've seen. We've seen inflation um, above 5% every single month for 23 straight months, and real wages have gone down for two straight years. One of the things that Chairman Brown said about you and that was indicated in the letter is that you are open to changing your mind. So once again, just want to directly ask, that word should not, transitory should have never been used. I don't want to say it should never have been used. I think that the, the word uh, is not a helpful term. I think okay. it's too ambiguous. I Thank think you. it doesn't uh, clearly, it's, it's, it does not clearly uh, delineate either what we believe to be the case or the actual trajectory. Now that said, it is true that we saw inflation accelerate and we've seen inflation cool, but we Would have a lot more to go. Would you agree that it's lasted go. longer than you anticipated when you first used that term? Yes. Okay, thank you. Dr. Bernstein, you've also um, championed uh, massive spending packages pushed by President Biden uh, over these last two years, the American Rescue Plan and the Inflation Reduction Act. Uh, you publicly said that they would decrease inflation. The hard truth is that these bills and policies have increased inflation and the result in some saying that we may be having to have a, refresh, a recession in order to stem inflation. More spending is not the answer. To lower costs for all Americans, we have to stop the reckless spending, reduce regulatory burdens on job creators, and unleash American energy production so that we are not just energy independent but energy dominant. President Biden has nominated you for the position of the Chair of Council of Economic Advisors, of which you currently serve um, as a member of the council. 72% of Americans believe that the economy is headed in the wrong direction. And as one of the architects of the past two years of the failing economic policies of this administration, it is concerning to me that President Biden is asking the Senate to confirm you to this position. Last month, we saw uh, President Biden propose his budget for fiscal year 2024 that includes a $6.9 trillion tax and spending spree that we know will continue to drive inflation even higher. All we have to do is look over the past two years for the evidence of that. I would ask you, um, how can the American people expect different results when this administration and its economic advisors tend to look like they're doubling down on what I believe has not worked? So uh, thank you for the question, Senator. I, I, I respectfully would like to challenge some of the 
the ways you've teed up some, some issues there. Uh, so first of all, uh, the rescue plan was actually fiscally smaller than the CARES Act. So if that was massive, then the CARES Act was even more massive. Uh, the uh, uh, Inflation Reduction Act more than pays for itself. It actually reduces the budget deficit by over 200 uh, billion over 10 years. Uh, in terms of the budget, the president's budget, uh, once again, that not only pays for uh, the proposals in the budget, but but reduces de the deficit by almost three trillion over ten years. So I, I think that those characterizations go in a different direction than some that you well, were suggesting. And I would, respectfully, and respectfully, I would disagree. I think if we were to be producing more energy, if we were to be spending less money, I think inflation would not have been as quote unquote transitory as you first put forth. So if I may, uh, Senator, the uh, uh, production of crude oil under President Biden is yes, the sir, highest. Yes, did you say that earlier? Is the highest under any president on record. Uh, and uh, in fact, uh, uh, under President Biden, on average, the production is 560,000 barrels per day greater than under the previous administration. And we see what's happening in Europe and, you, and the UK, and you've referenced that earlier. And if we were doing more to help them with their energy needs, I think that we would see um, those costs go down as well. Thanks, Senator Britt. Senator uh, Warren from Massachusetts is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to our nominees for being here today. So the sudden failure